هذه الصافرة التي تسمعها الآن هي ليست مجرد ضوضاء في الخلفية إنها علامة فارقة في تاريخ البشرية احتفت بها الجماهير حول العالم كأول إشارة تصلنا من خارج كوكب الأرض لتأذن بدويها ببدء السباق نحو الفضاء Broadcasting company filmed the first motion pictures of the Russian satellite. You are about to witness this historic event. President Eisenhower reassures the nation that Russia's success with the first satellite does not indicate a serious lag in American rocket research. I promised the Secretary of the Army that we would be ready in 90 days or less. But they were disappointed. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We have vowed that we shall not see space filled with weapons of mass destruction, but with instruments of knowledge and understanding. Without repeating the mistakes that man has made in extending his writ around this globe of ours. 60 عاما مضت على هذا الخطاب احتدم فيها المدمار اكثر من اي وقت مضى فهل اوفى الرئيس الراحل جون كينيدي بعهوده بعدم تكرار الاخطاء نفسها التي اقترفها الانسان على الارض في الفضاء since the beginning of the space conquest we have abandoned quite some satellite up there and we estimate that we have left in space around 9 tons of materials and we are constantly monitoring around 30,000 debris bigger than 10 centimeters. And these small pieces often are uh, created because the satellite exploded, for example, at the end of life, or because an astronaut, when he was doing some his work on the space station, left a screwdriver up there, and the screwdriver is still orbiting around. This is, for example, a piece of the space junk that you see here that we got from uh, the ASA people. So this is a piece of the solar panel of the Hubble telescope, 1995. Difficulty is this. These uh, pieces travel at the speed which is around 7 to 10 kilometers per second. When a piece of space junk hits an existing satellite, 27,000 kilometers per hour, it's like a bomb, eh? It's like two, three times per year. International Space Station, they got an alert, week, 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 and then they hide in a little bunker and then hope and then hope that nothing happens. And that's sort of okay, but anything below 10 centimeters, they cannot even track. And it's still lethal because the tiny particles are already like a bomb. So basically it's sort of you spend billions of euros, you send the smartest people, you, you put your smartest team on it, and then it's sort of, well, let's hope for the best. That's pretty crazy. لكن لطالما أن هذه المخلفات تهيم بعيدا في الفضاء، فهل يشكل الأمر أي أهمية لعامة الناس؟ No, space debris are important. The fact that uh, I'm in Paris talking to you, the fact that you know where you are thanks to the geolocalization, the fact that you know what is the weather for tomorrow is thanks to satellite. If we want to go back to analyzing a paper map to move from point A to B, welcome. We did it in the past, we can do it in the future. So although it seems very far away, it's actually really close. It's the way you interact with each other. الخوف اذا هو ان تصطدم هذه الاجسام بعضها ببعض اثناء سيرها بسرعات هائله لتحدث ما يشبه الانفجار. وبالرغم من أن هذا الارتطام لن ينهي العالم بغمضة عين كما تصوره أفلام السينما لكنه ببساطة قد يعيدنا ستين عاما إلى الوراء على الأقل No, it's not one collision which will cause that It's a chain of collision uh, In the space debris world we talk about the Kessler syndrome Kessler was, is a scientist, a NASA scientist, an American satellite, uh, scientist who analyzed the number of debris and said it could be that we are going to spiraling up. We mentioned before the fact that when a satellite explodes or when there is a collision from two big pieces, 
you create a cloud of smaller pieces. So if we enter into the Kessler syndrome, then we might uh, make some of the orbits so polluted that we cannot use them. But it's not from one second to the other like in the movie Gravity. Are we accepting that? No. Are you going to explain your grandchildren there's this whole world in Mars, in Neptunus, in Pluto, and it's great, and we've seen some amazing footage, and maybe there's water, but sorry, we can't go there. You know, I think that that is not the conversation you and I want to have with your grandchildren. الحصيلة حتى الآن هي روسيا تركت مركبتها تهيم في الفضاء إلى أن استنزفت بطاريتها. الولايات المتحدة حاولت مقاضاة روسيا بسبب خطأ اقترفته بنفسها. أما الصين فقامت بتفجير نفسها بنفسها لتثبت للعالم أن الأمر في مقدورها. It's not waste, but it's a potential. It's a building block. What would you build with 8.1 million kilo of Lego blocks? And that's what we started to do with the Space Waste Lab. More than 2,000 students worked on it. We talked with a lot of experts, and we said, can we use it to 3D print houses on the moon? Can we use it that we, we capture it with a sort of garbage truck and burn it up into a plasma fuel to recharge um, satellites? We ran out of battery yeah, to give them second life. But the most realistic one and that they got, got the most enthusiasm is the notion of shooting stars. It's just super complicated, you know? Like space is complicated and it's rough and it's brutal and it doesn't care about humans at all. It's completely oblivious to anything which is happening on Earth, you know? So we don't know how that piece of space junk that they're gonna capture, how it actually looks like. How it's, we have simulation, but we, I mean, there's no video of that space junk. The question is, what kind of priority do we give to these uh, 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 challenges, technical challenges, and how much we want to spend on it? Or we don't do anything about space junk, uh, and then a piece of space debris hits an existing satellite, 27,000 kilometers per hour, poof, it's like a bomb, and nobody has Instagram for four days, and the whole world goes crazy, and then I'm sure we're going to fix it in one month. So you know, that's the alternative. <laughs>